All right, a gatekeeper here. Well, what you're seeing here right now is some pictures of uh, preamps that you might find in the, uh, currently as they're right now in the hobby. And uh, one of the main things that I hear from a lot of people when it comes to preamps, preamplifiers, <clears throat> A lot of people say, oh, I don't like to use them because it also amplifies the noise. It also amplifies the static, you know, which, which is very true. The majority of your preamps are pretty much all built by the same uh, design in a sense. Well, I seeked out for a, for a different approach by a local, all I can call him is a genius. And um, he was able to help me design, or shall I say he designed, <laughs> it wasn't me, he designed a geniusly made um, preamplifier, which will be demonstrated now. Alright, here's the equipment that we're going to be using. Hewlett Packard signal generator. Hewlett Packard frequency counter and Motorola service monitor that is recently calibrated. All right, you see that has been recently calibrated, so there ain't gonna be no questions about that. We will be viewing probably that screen more. All right, this is a preamp that was bought and paid for via the internet. And it's off, the signal going through it. Look up the monitor it is about negative 12 decibels. These are divided into 10 increments. There's the input level. Tip it up just a touch. There you All go. Right. So I'm going to turn this thing on. You see the levels dropped as I increase the gain. They get about 8 decibels of gain off of this at full blast. However, the audio is attenuated. Here it is all the way down. All right, we got it turned all the way down. Turning the gain up. The RF gain goes up, but the audio drops All right, now do off. that again. Let me hold it up to the uh, analyzer so they can hear that. But it's all the way down to listen to the audio. See the gain jump up, the spike. Yeah. So the, the RF drops. is being amplified, but the audio is being, attenuated. is being attenuated. Now I open this up and we found the transistor they're using is a general purpose switching transistor. It is not an RF or audio amplifier. Right, and this is pretty much what you're going to be buying more of these days on a lot of, uh, of your major websites. This type of preamp is going to be a standalone unit. Alrighty, well, here is the solution to uh, all the issues with these preamps. If you look at the scope, our signal now is about negative 40 dB. If I plug this preamp in, this is an RF amplifier. A 30 true, decibels of amplification. True, true RF amplifier, you're seeing it right no here. No distortion, on no the scope. noise. Uh, I can watch, watch this. Let me cut the signal way back. There, now you're not even hearing it. Okay. If I kick the amplifier on. So you got a CB, weak noise. There's the amplifier out. It's not even any indication on the scope. Look at that. There you go. And listen to how clean and crisp. And as you notice, when he takes it away, you hear your normal static like you normally would, and you do not hear that static being amplified. There's, there you go. You hear that? That static is not being amplified with the signal. All you're hearing is a tone. And like these, the, the other ones, they're going to be amplifying the static with them because they're not actual true RF amplifiers they're more like switching and, and other such stuff like that so uh, there you go a true preamp amplifying on 27.205 channel 20 right in the middle of the band amplifying RF 30 decibels that's about 5s yep. units on your it's about 5s units of true RF amplification to show the uh, size comparison of the prototype and uh, this is kind of like what you're going to see in your modern amplifier usually is a uh, preamp add-on, something like this. It ain't too pretty, just something made real quick just to show you a size comparison and there's a prototype. 
and the board will be cut, obviously. Right. All surface mount technology done the proper way. So that's just to kind of show you a size comparison.